Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I'm glad to be hosting another one of our business updates uh, in which we regularly allow businesses and organizations uh, throughout the city to tell their story of uh, what they're going through during the, the pandemic to just uh, kind of present uh, and, and to remind viewers that uh, these are individual stories and uh, to make sure that we, we capture a snapshot of this time and to highlight uh, the, the stories themselves and the struggles and how people are overcoming them. So I am glad once again to be joined with uh, Jen Atwood, who is the Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets. Hello, Jen. Hi, thank you for having me here again. Of course, and Jessica Eshleman, who is the Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Dave, and hello, viewers. Uh, big thanks to Somerville Media Center for keeping these stories coming. We really appreciate it uh, always, but especially during this incredible time. Thank you. And uh, we're also joined with uh, Pastor Jordan Harris from Conexion in East Somerville. Uh, welcome to you, Pastor Jordan. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Greetings, everyone. And Lady S Signs, did I say that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Excellent. Who is the co-founder of Quanto Workspace, which is over in Boynton Yards. Welcome to you, lady. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, Somerville. Hello, Somerville, indeed. So, <laughs> um, so why don't we start off with um, Lady and Pastor Jordan, um, just kind of uh, introduce yourself to viewers and, and tell us about the, the impact of COVID on your organization. Um, you know, you can, you can present the situation since March or, you know, just since over the summer, how was your summer? Um, and, and just let us know, you know, what, what's going on. Sure. Uh, and um, why don't we start with Lady? Sure. Um, so we opened our workspace um, back in November of 2019. And then just when we were getting our grounding um, going, you know, COVID hit and we had two, uh, two startups in our space that were struggling financially even before uh, the pandemic. Um, so it's been a challenging few, few months to say the least. Uh, so we provide workspace and also operational support to international startups and with the travel restrictions. Um, so that's you know, been a challenge. And also we just have a question of, you know, when will folks return to offices? Uh, we're, seeing, um, we're seeing more like, uh, re like requests for virtual office services, but not so much yet uh, on the physical office, you know, workspace usage. I see. And um, Pastor Jordan, uh, what are you seeing over at your congregation? Yeah, so Connection um, is still a fairly young church. Um, we uh, completed com uh, construction in 2013, I, I want to say, um, with this kind of minimalist, um, very simple plan. Um, unfortunately, um, no one ever really predicted a global pandemic. And so there's no windows in our building, right? There's, there's only one access point in our building. Um, so we've not been able to, to be in there since March. Um, you know, prior to, to COVID, Connection was so much more than a, a church. It was a, a community center in East Somerville, really. And um, each week we would host everything from, you know, boy and girl scouts to community meals and do programs with the library and um, unfortunately, we're just not able to do anything in our space. Everything has turned um, has turned virtual. And so it's been quite a struggle for us um, to embody our namesake, right, connection, um, while we are not able to meet and see each other face to face, um, except through virtual means. So it's been it's been a real struggle for us. And um, you both have in common that that you're that you have members, uh, connection, obviously, a, a congregation, and lady, you have uh, members that are uh, uh, startups that you're you're helping out. So, what what are you hearing from your members, um, and what are what are their concerns, uh, Pastor Jordan? Yeah, so um, it's it's a mix of uh, you know hope and uh, a little bit of just despair. 
I think a lot of folks just didn't expect um, COVID to last this long. Uh, you know, we, we kind of were hoping by Easter and then by the summer and then um, by the fall. And, and it's looking like it's going to be quite a long time for us as well. And so I have a lot of folks who are um, just really sad and, and kind of missing the, the touchstone that is connection in their lives. You know, that weekly place you get to go and see people and eat together and touch and sing. And, um, and then also, you know, we are still able to, to do some things virtually. Um, and people are striving really hard to stay connected in, I would say new ways for me, but old ways for them, such as like letter writing and actually calling each other on the phone. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a bit of both for us. In our case, um, so recently we had uh, a startup that had been in a bigger co-working space, actually close, um, you know, their operations there and sort of like downsizing to just storing, you know, their, um, their employee files and then keeping an address. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of these folks are working from home. So really looking for ways to also cut back their operational expenses, because we don't, we don't know how long this is going to last. And then on the other side, on the international side with immigration policies, um, you know, uh, due to travel restrictions, you know, there's limitations on visa, um, you know, approvals and such. So that's also an unknown, I would say at the moment. Yeah. We have seen some things started to open up. So we've actually partnered uh, with a company from Spain to, to offer more direct um, services related to COVID-19. So we've had to diversify also, and we've had to be creative and resourceful. Um, we are, me and uh, my co-founder, so we've actually offered, you know, municipalities and universities um, uh, very much uh, like COVID related um, RFR and different um, projects related to like sewer testing, you know, testing COVID in sewer, um, in sewer water. So, and we've talked to different cities. So I think resourcefulness is one thing and also diversification, right? Mm. And then uh, looping to loop um, Jen and Jessica into this conversation, um, how does it, how, how does what we're hearing from Lady and Pastor Jordan, how does that fit into what, what the both of you are seeing? Um, Jen, why don't we start with you? I think um, what kind of what I'm hearing from from hearing from Lady and from Jordan is like those those small businesses that have been able to kind of more quickly adapt and pivot have been able to find a success strategy. I wouldn't necessarily I'd hesitate to use the word success strategy because no one's like really succeeding very well, but those that are finding new ways to survive. And I think that's key um, as we look forward to the next six months is it's really like you can't do business the way you've always done it. It's just not, um, that's not going to be the case and you wouldn't necessarily plan to be the case. So I think that those small businesses that can really think of like creative solutions, like, you know, doing a takeout window, um, doing like different kinds of events. Um, like we even as an organization have had to change our program completely as well. So just to encourage um, people to have like a really open mind and try to think of, um, think of it as an opportunity to just to try new things because the old way of doing things, it's just not, not very, it's not something that we're going to be seeing in the next six months, year, two years. I'd like to pick up on something that Pastor Jordan said about the sense of community and really um, how throughout Somerville, I think, whether you're a member of a congregation or a member of a, a community workspace um, or just a, a member of the public community, uh, Union Square Main Streets operates the farmer's market on the Union Square Plaza. And of course, we've had to adapt entirely to present what we call a COVID prepared market um, and that's required us to go from needing two volunteers an hour to needing more than 10 in order to make sure that we are implementing all those safety protocols that are required. But what has really struck me as I express my appreciation to our volunteers, 
uh, the core of course has grown significantly this year, is that they're turning that thanks around to our organization and the farmers at the market and the shoppers at the market. And they've said to me, volunteering here is giving me, it's quenching my thirst for community. I'm missing community. And so I come here every Saturday, I give two hours and sure I'm wearing a mask and I've got gloves on and I'm telling people where to stand and what to do and what not to do, but it's connecting me with my, with my community. So I just really wanted to hold that up, Pastor Jordan, because I, I, it's something so important to us as human beings. And when we talk about city centers and, um, you know, districts like downtowns or um, business districts like East Somerville and uh, Union Square, that sense of place brings a sense of community. And I want to applaud our small businesses uh, for getting creative in ways, um, stretching like Jen said, to figure out how to connect, um, keep us connected in these times. One of our local brewers, in fact, just recently started a virtual tasting opportunity. So up to 25 people, if you have a staff and you're looking to do like a retreat of some sort, you might be able to do a virtual tasting. Of course, it's over Zoom, but you're still going to share an experience that's unique and special. Um, and I just really wanted to bring in this human element because we know that the dollars are not here for a lot of our businesses, but I want to applaud the businesses and the community groups who are getting creative to figure out how to keep the human element part of it. Yeah, and, and Pastor Jordan, um, Jessica had mentioned the, the community element um, and uh, how, how are you keeping the community element alive with your congregation right now? You know, you mentioned the challenges that there is in doing that with, without being able to be together in the physical space. So, um, you know, how are you keeping a sense of community alive in your congregation? Yeah, um, so I often joke with my husband um, about how I have the same problem that Trevor Noah does and the hosts of all those late night shows. Um, each week I go on Facebook Live, right? And preach and kind of try and do a service, right? And interact um, with an audience that's not physically present. Um, and you know, it's it's the other half of my living room kind of where we have our studio set up is turning into Pee Wee's Playhouse essentially. And, you know, we're, we're trying to get silly and fun and interesting and you know, read comments people are posting in real time and respond to that as if, you know, you're kind of all in the same space. Um, and personally, I feel like it's chaos and um, all of these videos are gonna come back to haunt me in, you know, years years later, um, but folks love them, right? And it's, it's a small glimpse of, you know, what that Sunday morning used to be for folks. It's, it's a small glimpse of getting to laugh and share. It's, you know, an hour of, um, Either you're singing in, in your apartment, in your living room, or you're just listening to, to me barely get by with, you know, without carrying a tune. Um, but it's something. And I think that's that's the big thing for um, a lot of folks that I've been seeing. Just any small attempt um, is, is actually making a bigger impact. Um, we have a, a wonderful congregation and maybe five people have cars. Um, out of everyone here in the, in the some, um, some real area. And so we organize drop off for gift bags um, and, and stuff like that. I know we have Halloween coming up. So we have Halloween gift bags and kind of give them the folks to drop off at people's um, porches, you know, and then shoot them a text and wave and smile. And, and it's just small things like that, that um, are, you know, not necessarily uh, what we would have been doing in our normal day to day, but um, now, can, can make all the difference in someone's day. That's great. And, um, and lady, uh, a similar, similar question, you know, are you, uh, are you building a sense of community among, among the, the startups that you're watching out for? Um, is it, is yours that kind of organization, um, you know, or, or do you need to be a little more um, business-like? Um, and if you, if you are, you know, how do you build a sense of community right now with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the moment, most of our clients are the on the virtual office side. So it's mostly staying connected through like di digital platforms. So whether that's through this um, company that we've partnered with, Sphere, like Sphere Mail, or also WhatsApp. So just checking with folks on uh, that WhatsApp application because they may have international phone numbers. Um, and just making it, I think, making it a bit more personable on those messages. Um, so not fully, 
you know, as cold as just business like, but um, a little more warmth, yeah, to those conversations and those interactions. Janet mentioned that, you know, this is a, a pandemic that we, we're going to feel the impact for the next six months, the next year, potentially the next two years. Um, so, you know, what are you thinking about um, in, ter in terms of, you know, immediate needs now and then, and then long term? So immediate needs would be just operating, right? Operating with social distancing guidelines and also with um, just PPE requirements and making it as safe as possible uh, for folks. And in terms of long-term, just open questions like what will be um, the need for offices, you know, long-term. Um, and also that question of community. I'm also an artist um, and I'm connected to different parts of the um, art community in Somerville and wanting to create more community um, for that. And just, I think, being resourceful and um, seeing like what else can we do, right, to, to create a sense of community as well. Mm. Uh, oh, same question, Pastor Jordan. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, what struck me, um, and, and Jen is actually a part of this story, um, a couple of months ago, um, we lost a, a member of our community in East Somerville, um, a, a senior a senior citizen um, who she was just such a staple um, and um, wonderful, wonderful, like just beautiful person. Um, and neither Jen or I had known that she passed away. Um, I think Jen reached out to me and, you know, we kind of pieced it together using Google and, um, you know, and, and it's heartbreaking and, you know, kind of breaking the news to my congregation that, that this person had passed away and we can't really do much about it right now, but we can remember and we can talk about it and we can grieve. And um, so I think um, looking, you know, towards uh, the future, restoration is going to be a, a big thing. Um, I personally want to forget everything that is 2020, um, but also know that uh, a better way forward is, you know, to heal and to grow and to, to take what we're learning um, and, and make sure that uh, we apply it to, to how we operate um, in, the, in the future. What sort of resources are you, are you both uh, turning to? And then this is another opportunity for, for Jen and Jessica to maybe um, highlight some of the resources that they're directing uh, the businesses within their districts too as well. Uh, Pastor Jordan? Yeah, um, I think Lady mentioned creativity. That's that's the big thing right now for us. Um, you know, my, I, my husband is an artist um, and lost all of his gallery space in the midst of, of this. And so um, our front yard over here in West Somerville has become his new gallery. Um, and it's full of all sorts of giant wood cutouts um, that I'm sure is, um, not necessarily legal to be there, but it's such a, a joy for the folks in the community. Um, and, you know, I could sit out the window and watch people stop by and laugh and share. And sometimes, you know, if you're outside, you get to interact with people. Um, and while my business is church, right, and my job as a pastor, um, helping to, to cultivate a space where kids can see something cool and neat and unique while they're, you know, out on a walk, because that's basically all you can do, um, feels like sacred space to me. And so, um, yeah, really diving into a lot of our arts um, has has really just been the the best way to to offer that hope and, and sense of grace. Uh, and okay. lady, what resources are you are you looking to? Sure. In our case, our um, our banks have been really helpful and have been checking you know checking up on us. So both uh, Citizens Bank. Um, and also Eastern Bank that we've built relationships over time. Um, and then the Union Square Main Street organization as well. I joined, um, I think back in October, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just really been nice to, you know, be part of that community and hear, you know, the different stories um, and share also potential like solutions or potential resources. Um, and I've met some really great people from restaurants to architectural firms. And it gives you a sense of like, we're in this together. Um, and I'm actually like updating some signage for our storefront. And Jessica connected me with um, 
uh, a small uh, company in Artisan Asylum and they've been really helpful. So just, it gives you a sense of, you know, community, which is really helpful at this time. And uh, Jen, uh, what uh, what resources are you are you directing um, your businesses, the businesses in your district, to right now? Right now, um, there is a new state grant for businesses that aren't aware, probably haven't that just came out recently. That is from the Mass Growth Capital um, Corporation. So I've been trying to point businesses and help them with their application. So anyone who isn't aware that application I think is due in the first week or second week of November. So to they haven't um, found that opportunity to take a look at that. I do know that the city has also been mentioning that they're planning a second round of relief funding. So we're looking forward to seeing that come through. Um, and just yesterday, the license commission has agreed to waive uh, certain fees for businesses. So the city um, obviously is trying to do what they can to help the small businesses through this going forward. And if a business is not currently on the economic developments alert system, I highly recommend getting on that because that's also a wealth of resources that um, the city has. And when they um, are aware of something that is a useful tool, they will share that as well. So those are the resources that I, um, I would highlight at this moment. <laughs> And Jessica. Jen did a great job summarizing a lot of the most recent uh, resources from the state and the city. Um, in addition to all listed there, uh, we're working to advocate for outdoor dining options throughout the year uh, for those restaurants who are interested in doing so. Um, there's really some unknowns there as to what um, really the appetite throughout the city might be from the restaurants themselves to be out in January and February and March. Um, and of course, customers as well. But um, from the Union Square Main Street's perspective, those are choices and decisions that we think our small businesses and our customers should be making. And so we're advocating to the greatest extent possible in that realm. And then on, an, on a very different side of things, um, two things I'll note is we're very thrilled um, that thanks to the important and good work of the Union Square Neighborhood Council, the master developer US2, um, there has been funding for two positions in the Union Square area through a community benefits agreement that was negotiated between, again, the community uh, neighborhood council and the master developer. And so we are currently hiring a small business liaison. Um, today's October 30th, we're accepting applications through midnight tonight, but this is hugely meaningful because it'll mean that our small nonprofit has the ability to be hands on with more businesses uh, than our tiny team has been able to do regularly. And then the final thing I'd like to mention is preparing for the holiday season. Um, our small businesses, they need your um, patronage right now. And um, I think we all need joy. And so the holiday season, um, we are bringing back a version of our holiday stroll. It'll, it'll, instead of be one day, it'll be a full week of decorated storefronts, um, a promotion of getting Elfie and taking selfie and winning prizes, small business bingo. Um, again, this is a critical time for our businesses uh, to remain viable. And I don't want to sound alarmist, but in some cases, survival. Um, but I'll just bring it back to the joy factor. We need to come to our city centers and see these lights and be reminded of what the holiday season, no matter what tradition um, or heritage it is that you celebrate, that this is the time of year to, to remain connected and to celebrate our community as a whole. Yeah, great. Uh, just two quick things, um, or maybe three, uh, I'll name. First, the, the city is, um, using connection for free COVID testing. Um, you can you know, find all of that information on the city's website. Um, spaces in East Somerville are, are tight and limited. And so we're so grateful that we're able to, to offer that to the community. Um, I wanna encourage everyone, you know, especially if you are out and about, um, just to get tested regularly. Um, and, and yeah, it's great that we live in a city that you can, you can do that for free. Um, secondly, the the only program operating out of our church right now is the Somerville Cambridge Backpack Program. 
um, which provides school lunches for kids um, in Somerville and Cambridge. It's through Food for Free. Um, please just continue to support them and their work. I know even as the school situation gets kind of crazy here, uh, they're continuing to to gather food and then pack lunches and figure out, you know, how can instead of 30 volunteers working together, how can eight or 10 um, make this this work well? So reach out um, and please continue to support them. And then finally, I am on the board of uh, CAS, the Community Action Agency of Somerville. Um, and I am the chair of development there, so I would not be doing my job if I did not invite you to, to check out the work CAS is doing. Um, they, they are doing some really, really great work um, helping folks stay housed as the eviction moratorium um, is up. Continue just to, to support them in their work and know that every dollar you, you kind of give to CAS actually goes right back out into the community, helping folks uh, to stay housed here in our city. So. Excellent, thank you. And Lady? In our case, I've gotten to know so many wonderful restaurant owners. So my encouragement would be to continue to support them, especially in the colder months. And if you can try to, you know, order directly from the restaurant as much as possible. Um, I, I've been trying to do that myself. Um, and also, um, as Jessica mentioned, in terms of the holiday stroll, we're gonna do a, a small pop-up gallery type show uh, leading up to that week also in our, pay, our space. So we're at 42 Medford, uh, feel free you know, to stop by. We're definitely gonna follow all the uh, COVID protocols and social distancing, but we look forward to creating like a bright and you know, communal space. Very nice, thank you. Um, and Jen and Jessica, any, any, anything to add to that? Yeah, so East Somerville Main Streets, we um, are changing our markets now to a once a month holiday market. And we just had our October uh, Halloween holiday market, which was fantastic. And we have some also new vendors joining us for our November holiday market, which is November 15th, and our December holiday market, which is December 13th, including some of our local brick and mortars who will be vending at the outdoor market, which we're really excited about. So come on by for those. And we're also continuing our porch portraits that we've been doing as a donate what you can concept. Um, we have this wonderful pictures um, from people all over our neighborhood. Uh, and we are doing a set of, of Halloween ones um, to this weekend, Saturday. We still have time slots available. And then especially on Sunday, we're going to do like pet photo ones specifically. Um, so there's a photo booth option, but then there's also we'll come to you and do um, porch portraits anytime. And it's a great time to kind of continue to do that if you need like a, like a portrait for your holiday card. So we're going to continue to keep doing those for the community. So I, I look, I encourage people to go to eastsummervillemainstreets.org uh, porch portraits. Very nice. Um, and uh, I want to make sure all viewers know two things. First, I'm really excited. Our snap match at the Union Square Farmers Market has been increased. And so I want to make sure to share that as widely as possible. Uh, SNAP customers are now able to get matched dollar for dollar up to $15 at every single market. So come every Saturday that we're open. Um, I am going to mention that there is a Somerville Farmers Market Coalition that was formed this year for us to fundraise collectively. So this is the Winter Market at the Armory, the Davis Square Farmers Market, the Mobile Market run by the city, and the Union Square. Farmers Market, and through these collective fundraising efforts, this is the first time Somerville has had a citywide SNAP match program. And so I'm really grateful, Dave, for the chance to share this with your viewers. Um, and all on the call, please share this with your communities as well. Um, this $15 match is available at all the markets. So once the Union Square Farmers Market wraps on Saturday, November 21st, those benefits can be redeemed up at the Armory and till we see you again next spring. And then finally, um, of course, we're a nonprofit Union Square Main Street's always grateful for people's support if folks wanna give it, but really what I wanna urge viewers is shop local, be local, invest local this holiday season. We know amazon.com is great for some things and convenient for a lot of reasons, but if you love the diversity of our neighborhoods, 
please vote with your dollars and uh, make those gifts, whether make those purchases for your gift giving season, whether it's virtually online with our small businesses at their website or in storefronts um, safely through COVID restrictions. Um, so thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I love talking with um, business organizations and businesses and nonprofits because you all are, are just so adept in, um, you know, putting together the case for community. And, uh, you know, you make a strong case for community and supporting community, and this is the time to do it. Um, so um, I appreciate every, every one of you joining me today. Um, Jessica Eshleman, the Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets, Jen Atwood, Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets, uh, Lady Signs, the co-founder of Quanta Workspace over in Bo uh, Boynton Yards, and Pastor Jordan Harris from Connection in East Somerville.